talking to snake. <laughs> okay. For the whole chamber. <laughs> All right. Can we go, Ed? All right. All right, good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the Planning and Land Use Management Committee. Joined by the Honorable Council Members Mitch Englander and Jose Wiesar. Uh, we do have a few items today on the agenda. And um, we had a f quite a few consent and continue to refer, but they've all been, uh, we have a card on each one, so I have to call each one special for that card. Now, before I get started, and I know m many of you are here for the item number three, uh, you should be aware that uh, we will be continuing that item for two weeks. Now, that item will be continued. We've already had public hearing on this item, but out of courtesy to you, you came here, we're going to essentially uh, allow for one minute each, and um, we'll do it for 15 minutes, and we'll line up the folks. And if we need more, we'll probably add them to five more minutes, but the quicker you can make your presentation, because we've already had the public hearing, technically and legally, but I know you made the trip here. I want to acknowledge that fact and respect it and give you that time to speak, uh, but it'll be one minute. And, and so I just want to make you aware of that situation. Unless my colleagues feel compelled to add more minutes, we can do that. Um, but that being said, um, let's start with item number one, Roberto. Okay. Uh, item one is a motion, uh, Perry Reyes Wizar. It's uh, asking planning to report back on uh, the feasibility of an overlay zone for outdoor display in the fashion district. Okay. Okay. Sir? Get the speaker on. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon again. Okay, we're on. <laughs> there it is. Maybe a little more volume. Kevin Keller, City Planning. Uh, good afternoon. Planning staff for the... Uh, the downtown area. We are here to receive uh, the file, uh, receive, in, receive the uh, motion. Um, this is part of our ongoing efforts in the fashion district, and we look forward to working with the council office and the community on this effort. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, we have uh, Tim McCosker on this item. Um, yes. Good afternoon, sir. I'm very well, how are you? Okay. Good afternoon. Chair and committee members, thank you very much. My name is Tim McCosker. I'm with Mayor Brown, law firm representing the Fashion District uh, on this issue. I realize this is a referral uh, to the uh, planning department, but I wanted to spend a couple of minutes to talk about, uh, you know, why we are here today and what's unique about this property. Uh, believe it or not, years ago, before this was the Fashion District, this was one of the early residential communities in Los Angeles, serving the downtown area before it became an industrial area. As such, it's parcelized uh, in very small parcels. We have about 2,000 parcels, actually, in this, in this district with about 3,000 businesses now that have been, because the buildings have been adaptively reused for these businesses, that have street frontage. It is a very, very unique amenity in the city of Los Angeles. Great cities around the world have these open air opportunities for visitors and residents alike to come and be able to see the wares. And what has happened over the years, and I'll be very brief, I know you've had a long day and you have another long item coming up, but uh, over the years, uh, through good community policing, LAPD came up with um, essentially a, um, a compromise where LAPD enforced uh, and allowed for open air display and open air sales as long as it didn't intrude into the street to a certain distance and that, that was appropriately but arbitrarily picked at a distance without really code authority for doing so. Over time, as you might expect, LAPD command changes, and one took a look at this recently and said there wasn't, there wasn't really authority um, to do these open air displays and sales, even though there wasn't a particular problem that, that we're aware of. So an enforcement action began uniformly across the district, creating great disruption for the city and for the community, for the shopping public. And so what we wanted to do is respond in the most appropriate way, working closely with 
with the city agencies and say, we'd like to come forward and propose, just, I'll just wrap Please. up one minute, propose an overlay district that would have reasonable regulations to protect the health and safety, protect economic, economic opportunity within the city, protect the folks that are doing business there. And so we're going to work closely with your planning department to come back with something that you can adopt. Thank you, Minister. I have some fantastic. photos and maps for your staff that show okay. the unique character of the area. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Ken Smith, Eduardo Campi, and then John Walsh. I'd like to come on up. You can form a line if you like. Good afternoon. I'm Kent Smith. I'm the executive director of the Fashion District Business Improvement District. We represent over 900 property owners, and we are looking forward to working with the City of Los Angeles Planning Department to create an overlay zone for outdoor display for those areas of the district where it would enhance the streetscape and at the same time respect public safety. We'll work with the owners and the tenants to help the city identify the appropriate areas in the district for outdoor display. Outdoor displays in the Santee Alley have a long history dating from the 1970s when clothing and fabric was placed outside to announce sales for the public. Santee Alley now has some of the highest number of pedestrians anywhere in the city of LA and virtually equaling those at Third Street Promenade in Santa Monica. And that brings him, not only does it bring a lot of people downtown, but it's an important source of tax revenue to the city. We want to especially thank LAPD and street services who have used their discretion to allow outdoor displays to occur while we go through this process to establish uh, a more formal legal framework. And I want to, um, Look, I just again say we're looking forward to working with the planning department on this. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next speaker, and after uh, Mr. Wallace, we'll have uh, Council District 9, Stephanie Magdalene Rockwell. So, sir, go ahead. Good afternoon. My name is Eduardo Campi. I'm a business owner in the uh, fashion district. I have a number of employees that depend on our business, the everyday. What makes this place unique is exactly the displays, outside displays, the colors, what makes this different from anything else in the city, and that's what brings the people to this area. No other place has gone through what this place has gone in the sense that they, when we had the crisis of the uh, econom economical issues, this place was still going, and it was still going because people wanted to be outside. They wanted to come to a place that was colorful, that had the displays that we have. So this is something unique, and in order to preserve this, we need to come up with some kind of solution that would allow us to maintain the status quo as it is. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Mr. Walsh. John Walsh, blogging at Hollywood Highlands, H I G H L A N D S dot org. Yesterday, 6,000 successful requests in 24 hours. You want to know why we're at the pace of 2 million when we used to be at the pace of 1 million? Go. We are 100% behind this fashion overlay district. Of course, we want to divide this city, and I'm not being sarcastic, into areas. But all we are asking is that you remove the alcohol overlay district from Hollywood. We have more licenses than any area of any city in America. Because you buy your clothes in the fashion district, and then you come and show off your clothes and get raped in Hollywood. Seven, seven unsolved rapes in the last month. Go check Mapping LA and you'll find out. HollywoodHighlands.org. No more raping of Hollywood. And 100% for the fashion district. Thank you. Good afternoon. Hello, Stephanie Magdalene Rockwell from Councilwoman Perry's office here to speak in support of the motion. Um, Fashion District is a very unique place. Um, outdoor merchandise display certainly adds to the um, fabric, if you will, uh, and character of the area. So we look forward to working with um, city staff and the bid um, to come up with an appropriate mechanism to allow this to continue. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank that you. was very, very astute there. 
Great. So we will uh, refer this to the planning department. Any questions? Uh, okay. Refer this to the planning department. Item number two, Roberto. Um, item two, council members, is a motion by Mr. Englander, yourself. Uh, it's asking planning and the city attorney to report on the feasibility of an ordinance that expands the MR2 uses. It's called special for a card. Mr. Walsh, you submitted a card for this item. And colleagues will be referring this to the planning department in consultation with the city attorney. John Walsh blogging at hollywoodhighlands.org. This is a restricted light industrial zone. We 100% for you restricting industry in this zone. What we are asking you for is a restricted alcohol zone. Now, uh, alcohol and narcotics killed two Chinese students just recently in a neighboring neighborhood. We need restrictions. I will vote and I support any motion that uses the word restriction. And they haven't had a motion concerning Hollywood here for 20 years that had the word restriction in it. HollywoodHighlands.org. And remember, anybody but Garcetti for mayor. Thank you, sir. Please stay focused on the subject matter. <laughs> Refer to the planning department, call the city attorney. That'll be the action of this committee. Our next item. Uh, the next item is the uh, general plan amendment to the Hollywood Community Plan. Do you want to skip that item and go into the other items? Then we'll come back to this. Okay. So the next item would be the cultural heritage uh, inclusion of uh, the young gribbling residents in CD1. Okay. So the next items are consent items. If there's, if that's okay with my colleagues. And four or five, six have been called special for cards. And that's for Mr. Walsh. So Mr. Walsh, why don't you come on up and give us your point of view on four, five, and six, if you'd like. You can summarize it however you want to approach it, but we want to make sure you have your moment with each John item. John Walsh, HollywoodHighland.org. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the international capital. They Sir. cannot build anything. It doesn't matter what rules they what. This is an invitation for capital to come, worldwide capital. Let's take a look at Hollywood Highlands. Bill, Sir, for item number four. Sir, dollars. Sir, what? item number four is what we're focused on. Item number four. Yeah, item number four. Yes. Or you skip three. Okay, yes. Hollywood Highlands. This is the cultural heritage. We're all for the cultural heritage uh, commission, but it seems like in Hollywood, the cultural heritage is get drunk and hang out in our neighborhood. No, sir, this is and North Raven Avenue. Hollywood. Hi okay. Okay, number five, you're going to pass on that? Yeah. And six? Yeah. And seven. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, that gets us to item number three. So, so Councilman, uh, just to be clear, item four, five, and six, those consent. were approved on consent. Yes. And seven, there's no report this week. And that takes us back to item three, which is the general plan amendment to Hollywood. Okay. So let's read number three to the record, Roberto. Uh, yes. Item three, Councilman, Council members, is a proposal from the Planning Commission as to a general plan amendment to the Hollywood Community Plan. Okay. Good afternoon, uh, committee members. Kevin Keller from City Planning here with Mary Richardson. Uh, we do, I'm going to hold all my, my remarks for after the hearing or at the next meeting, but I am going to ask Mary to give about a four or five minute overview and just reminder of where we are on this important plan, especially for some of the members who may not have been at the first hearing. So Mary. Okay, for those of you who were here last time, uh, we did this overview before, but um, I think it's, this is an important plan, an important moment, so I'm going to run through it again. We started work on this plan in 2004. We had two workshops in 2005. We did a street standard study in 2007. We released the first draft of the plan in 2009. The second draft was released in 2010. The final environmental impact report was released in 2011 in October. And in November of that year, we had three public hearings. The City Planning Commission approved the plan in December, and then we were here several weeks ago oh, to oh, Plum. Sure. And um, we, uh, we, will be, we will be coming back. The purpose of the plan is to accommodate growth sustainably, 
to focus development around infrastructure, to preserve neighborhoods and historic resources, to provide mobility options, and promote good design. Our current plan was adopted in 1988. Since that time, we've had significant investment in transit infrastructure. We now have a subway system with four stops, and we have a number of metro rapid bus lines. The plan focuses growth around this infrastructure, especially to the west of the 101 freeway in the regional center. Historically, this area was a business district with floor area ratios much higher than they are today or what we are proposing. In 1988, development limitations were placed on the commercial corridors and the multifamily residential neighborhoods. Along the commercial corridors, the floor area ratio was limited to 0.5 to 1 and 1 to 1. And in the multifamily residential neighborhoods, the R4 density was restricted to R3.5. We are proposing to remove those limitations and restore the standards that apply throughout the rest of the city. Along the transit corridors and in the regional center, we are proposing to increase floor area ratio to 3 to 1 and to 4.5 to 1. Currently, it's 2 to 1 and 3 to 1. We have heard concerns about this increasing scale of development, and we are proposing height limits. We have maps of those here today if you want to take a look. Uh, most of those height limits are around the historic neighborhoods. To ensure that the development is well designed, we are proposing pedestrian oriented design standards and several design overlays. To protect historic resources, the plan requires that projects in the commercial FAR incentive areas that utilize those incentives uh, would be reviewed by the Office of Historic Resources. The plan keeps alleys open for use by pedestrians, bicyclists, and motorists and improves the condition of existing alleys with an alley improvement plan and an alley maintenance plan. The plan adds a number of new parks, including several pocket parks in East Hollywood and a new Franklin Ivar Park in the regional center. The plan protects jobs in the media district south of Santa Monica Boulevard by prohibiting residential uses there and allows a mix of industrial uses with other uses around the edge of that media district. The plan proposes neighborhood traffic management plans to reduce the volume and speed of traffic that flows off of the commercial streets into the neighborhoods. The plan proposes a traffic impact fee on new development to fund programs such as dash buses and bicycle amenities. The plan proposes bikeways on Fairfax and Fountain and identifies other streets to be studied as possible bikeways in the future. The plan modifies street standards to maintain the wide 15-foot sidewalks on the historic streets. To make the streets more walkable, we propose streetscapes on La Brea, Melrose, Cahuenga, Western, Hollywood, and Santa Monica. At our public hearings, a number of concerns were raised, and the City Planning Commission approved changes to the plan based on these concerns. Regulations on hillside development were strengthened. We clarified that the slope density formula applies in the plan, and we included policies to support the evaluation of retaining wall regulations and the preservation of ridge lines. We heard concerns about traffic congestion along Franklin, a very busy street, and in response, we removed upzoning proposals north of Franklin between Western and Highland. East Hollywood community members were concerned that our recommendations were out of scale with the neighborhood, so we made a number of modifications there. Along Serrano, we left the limitation on R4 density in place. We downzoned several blocks in the La Mirada neighborhood and another block at Fountain and Gower. Along Santa Monica and Western, we modified the floor area ratio in those incentive areas from 3 to 1 to 2.5 to 1. And to address concerns about preserving historic resources in the multifamily residential neighborhoods, we included a policy which would require projects that utilize that incentive and would affect historic resources to be reviewed by the Office of Historic Resources. Okay, thank you very much. So we'll go for 15 minutes, one minute each speaker, and I'm going to go through each stack, general, opposed, support, someone has 
equal access to the microphone. And so we'll start with Pat McCosker, then Lucille Saunders, and then Marion Dodge. Come on up. Thank you. Afternoon, council members. Listen, I don't know if supersizing Hollywood is a good idea or a bad idea. I just know it'll be a deadly idea if you don't do something about the infrastructure, and specifically, I mean, by having enough firefighters and paramedics to protect that community. You know what's going on. Forty percent of the time, we're not getting there on time right now to save lives when people are not breathing, to keep a fire from burning out of control. So you can't build up the city even more while the fire department is staffed the way that it is right now because it will be irresponsible. It will take us even longer to get there. More lives will be lost, more fires will burn out of control, and it's irresponsible. So, you know, there's supposed to be a mitigation. People pay fees, developers pay fees. Those don't come back to the fire department. You're not following right now your, your uh, infrastructure plan. The mayor just swept the hydrant fee clean on the fire department, took millions of dollars out of it to balance the budget rather than to put back into that infrastructure, that protection for citizens when developers build. This is dangerous stuff. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lucille Saunders. Thank you. Lucille Saunders from the La Brea Willoughby Coalition. Uh, in addition to our uh, previous um, arguments that there was not valid data on infrastructure on, on the projected census data, the La Brea Willoughby Coalition strongly supports the Department of City Planning staff reports and findings and recommendations to retain the MR1 zoning to sub-area 39.4. This is located on both sides of La Brea, generally between Romaine and Willoughby, extending west. Uh, let me just go on because my time is running. Anyway, the CPC has approved this, and um, we, we would like to change some language because the, uh, um, Exhibit E with the reason for change is to promote industrial uses to provide incentives for maintaining target media related Thank you, industrial uses. We Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Marianne Dodge? Where Thank it you, says Please. Thank you. I'm Marion Dodge, President of the Hillside Federation. There is much in the Hollywood Community Plan which is to be commended. The Baseline Hillside Ordinance, the Slope Density Ordinance, the Ridgeline Protection Ordinance, Retaining Wall Ordinance. Much community input was incorporated into the plan. However, there is one issue that continues to be of concern to the Federation, the amount of densification that is planned along the transit corridors. The Hillside Federation urges the city to re-examine the population projections and the proposed densification to see if it's really justified. Are the population projections on which the densification is based accurate? If the population is declining, do we need more densification? Given that the city already has water restrictions, traffic is already at a standstill, and our emergency services are already stretched, can the city, can the city afford increased density? We don't want developers building out of scale and excessive height projects now when there's no demand to justify it. Thank you. Jim McQuiston, James O'Sullivan, and Lori Goldman. <coughs> All those names. Jim McQuiston, James O'Sullivan, and Laurie Goldman. Good day, sir. Jim McQuiston, I'll hold my comments uh, along. Uh, I do want to point out that I did put in a calculation showing what uh, we're going through as far as uh, restrictions uh, monetarily. Uh, I believe in those restrictions, but I did want to put that forward because that's something I think uh, we haven't put down on paper before, and you all have that. Thank you, sir. Council members, Jim O'Sullivan, Fix the City. One thing has become abundantly clear over the last several weeks based on information we have provided to you and to the press. The city has been making critical development decisions without any understanding of the state of the city's infrastructure. You now know that the fire department has been reporting false statistics for you for years. And that means that every development project you have approved that contains an evaluation of fire protection 
and the city has been based on data now known to be false. The same thing holds true for this plan's public safety evaluation. Since the controller has not completed her audit, there can be no doubt that you completely lack the information to make an informed decision. Any decision to approve this plan would clearly be arbitrary, capricious, and without rational basis because you simply do not know the state of your own fire department. You really have no choice for the sake of the safety of the city's residents, the firefighters, and the police department. You must reject this plan. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Gold member, Goldman, board member and officer, Central Hollywood Neighborhood Council. Good afternoon, Plum Committee. As chair of our ad hoc committee, I'm testifying in support of the plan. Central Hollywood, ver referred to as the flatlands in the plan, is the most diversified and densely populated area within the plan. Our grid of streets has a regional center, a major commercial corridor, an industrial district, single family homes, multi family homes at Theater Row and historic and cultural resources. This plan reflects our stakeholders' desires for our neighborhood and the range of uses needed in a healthy, growing community. I must tell you, in CHNC, our population increased by 6.3%. This is a sustainable plan that promotes a livable community. We thank Mary and Kevin for working with our committee to incorporate um, goals which CHNC believes helps our stakeholders. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Nina Vaskowitz, Scott Campbell, and Alfredo Hernandez. Good afternoon, ma'am. Hi, my name's Nina Paskowitz. I live in Whitley Heights, which is just above Franklin between Highland and Wilcox. I've been there my whole life. Um, I'm in favor of anything that will help the um, the traffic, which can sometimes take an hour to go from La Brea to Highland if you're on Franklin. If you have uh, a marathon, if you have the Academy Awards, all of this is blocked off and, and not ever really detoured in a way that makes it possible to even get home. So there are days where I don't even leave my house. Um, if you want to put in high rises in a place where all you have is is one bar after another, underground bars where they want to come and they sleep in our neighborhoods at night afterwards and penetrate our homes, um, that's unacceptable. But if you want to put something nice in, like the Third Street Promenade, and do it in a way that actually allows residents to get to their homes and everyone to enjoy it, I'm all in favor. Thank you, ma'am. The next speaker, please. Good afternoon. My name is Scott Campbell. I'm president of Central Hollywood Neighborhood Council, the first certified neighborhood council in Hollywood. Um, here to testify on behalf of the plan. We had, as you heard from Lori Goldman, extensive ad hoc meetings, uh, evaluated the plan for our area, and are in support of the plan. We've been very pleased with how our ideas and suggestions have been incorporated into plan and uh, giving acknowledgement to Mary and Kevin regarding that. Some of the things that I wanted to make sure you knew that we got included into the plan or are pleased about are the Hollywood Freeway Central Park, the CPIO, the Implementation Ordinance, and several other corrections and inconsistencies that Mary and Kevin were very gracious to incorporate into the plan. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next speaker. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Alfredo Hernandez, uh, Government Relations Chairman for the Friends of the Hollywood Central Park. Uh, we are very much in favor of the Hollywood Community Plan. Uh, the park is an essential part of the plan, and Mary and Kevin have been very, very uh, accommodating to any of our concerns or requests uh, regarding the park and its implementation into the plan. And I would also like to welcome anybody who has any questions regarding the park before they speak against it to please check our website and inform themselves first. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next three speakers, Ed Hunt, Susan Polifronio, and I believe it's Lennon Golder. That's Ed Hunt, Susan Polifronio, and I think it's Leron Golder, Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, or Lennon. I'm trying to read the name. <laughs> I'm sorry. Good day, sir. Chairman, members, I'm Edward Hunt. I'm this year's president of the Melrose Hill Neighborhood Association, a Hollywood neighborhood of about 4,000, 
500 residents currently proposed uh, for a greatly expanded HPOZ. Um, we've worked on this plan for the last 19 years uh, with three different teams, the latest Mary and Kevin. Uh, we're very pleased to support many elements, particularly as just mentioned, the Hollywood Central Park, the uh, follow-up pedestrian-oriented planning for Melrose and Route 66 Santa Monica, and uh, for the HPOZ proposed for the most of our neighborhood. Uh, regarding density, uh, the uh, real problem is the increase on our three commercial streets. Again, we're nowhere near the uh, the rail line. It's. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker. Hello, Susan Polifronio. Thank you for letting me address the Plum Committee. Um, I'm on the board for the Friends of the Hollywood Central Park, so we appreciate the inclusion of the park in the plan. However, um, I have some real difficulty as a 30-year resident business owner in Hollywood um, on Franklin Avenue and north of Franklin Avenue. I think part of the plan is denying the 100-year-old his history of Hollywood. If you, um, it's a culture that is not just all part of California, Los Angeles, California, and really the entire world. Um, if you're transforming Hollywood, I think some attention needs to be paid to the height limits that you're talking about. East of Cahuenga, if you remove height limits, from your point of view, the, Holly, the Los Angeles basin looking back towards Hollywood, it's going to obscure, obscure the entire historic hillside. If you think you're going to see the iconic Hollywood Hills in that iconic sign or anything else, it's just going to be a wall of concrete. And I Thank think you, that needs to be Thank addressed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker. Council members, I'm LeBron Google, LeBron, President and CEO okay. of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, uh, here speaking on behalf of the Chamber. You know, a lot has been said about the SCAG projections, and I think it's important to keep in mind that the SCAG projections are not a mandate for growth, they're merely a forecast of growth. And I think everyone would agree that at some point there will be continued growth in Hollywood, and the important thing to consider is where that growth should go. This is a plan that is carefully thought out that directs that future growth should be directed into the core areas of Hollywood. We've been working on this plan now for eight years. There have been more than 150 public meetings. So th the plan has been vetted. It's time to move forward. It's time to get on to other plans and other issues in the city and in Hollywood. We would urge you to uh, approve this in two weeks and to move it forward. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And we're in our last five minutes, so we'll move on. We have Bruce Campbell, Valerie Keegan, and Mike Swanson. Good day, council members of the Plum Committee. So I'm Bruce Campbell from Palms area, not from Hollywood, but I have concerns about the Hollywood area. First, I see a typo, page 37 says the heart of Hollywood is East of Gower, it means west of Gower. I like the recent concern about increased density east of Cahuenga, even under this plan, and certainly if that horrific skyscraper is approved. And then policy LU.1.13, protect distinctive features of prominent streets in Hollywood. Capitol Records Building is a distinctive feature of a prominent street, Vine Street. And then says, LU.2.22, minimize the loss of good quality affordable housing. Encourage the replacement of demolished quality affordable housing stock with new affordable housing opportunities. But if we, uh, if we encourage the replacement of demolished quality you, affordable housing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Our next speaker. Thank you, sir. Our next speaker. Valerie Kagan. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. The plan calls for an increased density around the transit corridors when it can be supported and accommodated. The core here cannot support or accommodate it, the, pro the proposed increased density with everything that we already have. Millions of tourists come to Hollywood and the visitors aside from the residents, but no allowances in this plan have been made for these millions of people. Folks attending movie premieres will never take the bus. They will always come with a car. Something has to give. 
Hollywood Core is a sitting duck for a real disaster. We have more high-profile entertainment venues, nightclubs, special events, movie premieres, and public street closures than anywhere in the city. Gridlock traffic conditions are choking this area. This, with Hollywood's topography, contribute to our already reduced response times. Implementing this plan will require a tremendous amount of additional city resources funding to all public services, police, fire, ambulance, code enforcement, mitigation, and infrastructure. Is all of this funded a part Thank of you, the Mayor's forthcoming budget? Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Mike Swanson. And our last three speakers after Mr. Swanson, we Flora Chow, Terry Thank you. I'm Mike Gerger. Swanson. Just one minute. I'm sorry. We have uh, Flora Chow, Terry Gerger, and Dick G. So go ahead. I'm Mike Swanson representing Hollywood Presbyterian Medical Center. And like uh, many businesses and, and certainly hospitals, our economic fortunes follow the fortunes of the community. And uh, our hospital has struggled for decades and is just now sort of turning around with the economy. But uh, with uh, looming health care reform and uh, projected reductions in our, in our revenue and cost increases, we need revitalization in Hollywood to help us survive and to be able to continue to provide health care for the community that, that the community deserves. So we, we see as revitalization as uh, critical to the health of our hospital. And we think this plan provides that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Flora Chan, Terry Gerger, and then Dick G. And that'll be the last speaker. Good day. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Flora Chu, the preservation advocate for the Los Angeles Conservancy. The Conservancy wants to thank again the planning staff for their hard work on the plan. We appreciate the efforts they have made to address many of our concerns. And we look forward to working with them to implement a plan, such as the overlay for Central Hollywood with design guidelines and policies to prevent preemptive demolitions. Nonetheless, we remain concerned that without the incorporation of Survey LA and CRA survey data into the plan, potential historic resources will remain vulnerable to development pressures. Additionally, with the loss of CRA LA, the permit and design review they conducted that protects historic buildings in their redevelopment areas is threatened. To address these issues, we have urged demolition review for any property 45 years and older in the plan area or in areas with a concentration of historic resources. We urge the city to allocate the necessary resources and personnel to not only implement the current plan, particularly for the Office of Historic Resources, but to also consider additional staff for this policy, or at a minimum, to continue CRA's role in land use reviews in the redevelopment areas. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Next speaker. Hello. My name is Terry Gerger. I'm the past president of the Hollywood Dell Civic Association, a community of roughly 5,000 residents just north of Franklin and the Hollywood Hills. Many of the residents in the hillside community north of the plan either work in Hollywood or travel through it on a daily basis to get to work or to grocery shopping, etc. We know firsthand the lack of traffic planning currently in Hollywood and the dilapidated infrastructure currently facing Hollywood. The plan has no traffic mitigation measures required to be funded or installed prior to the start of the future project development. The plan does not address infrastructure mitigations to accommodate future commercial and mixed-use developments while providing for adequate fire, life, safety, and sewer services for existing residential communities north of Franklin. And the plan has no height limitations on future developments between Franklin and Sunset east of of the Coango Boulevard. As presently written, the HCP could allow projects over a million square feet and building heights of 50 stories plus. This would result in a curtain of buildings obscuring not only historical projects like the Capitol Records building, but blocking views of the residents of the hills south. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Our next speaker. I would um, I have a question. If our staff could review that board later, I'm going to ask some questions to see if that board is accurate. But during the question and answer period, I would like to, uh, Madam, I would like to. Madam with the board, are you going to be around till after the testimony? I would like to review that board afterwards to see if it's an accurate assessment of what would be allowed there, if that's okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir. Mr. G. Good afternoon, committee members. Uh, my name is Dick G with JAG Architects, and I am for the Hollywood Community Plan. Uh, but there's no for or against growth because it's ine inevitable and it's going to happen anyway. What we're talking about is smart growth. And as an architect, um, Hollywood is uniquely situated among uh, only a few areas in Los Angeles that accommodate that growth. And, um, and definitely it has the infrastructure, the transportation, uh, everything you need for that area to, to sustain uh, the, the higher density. 
but as a preservationist, I've uh, re rehabilitated three historic uh, cultural mo monuments in Hollywood, including the El Capitan and Hillview Apartments and the, the Charlie Chaplin Studios. And, um, and I can tell you, I've gone through the plan, and uh, there is uh, definitely enough accommodation to protect the uh, historic resources with uh, height restrictions and setbacks and um, in, um, support of the plan. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And that concludes the 15 I minutes. I submitted a speaker I, un card. I understand, ma'am. What we did is uh, we closed comment after 15 minutes. We gave everybody 15 minutes. This time will be continued uh, for the next two weeks. So that will be the action of this committee. Uh, so at this juncture, we have covered all the items. I'm, yes, I'm sorry. We're, the meeting's being disrupted. If we can have whoever's speaking. Um, Okay. Not disrupt the meeting so we can hear the okay. chairman, please. Thank you. Okay, so uh, this item will be continued in two weeks. We had public comment the last time we, we visited this item, and we opened this out of courtesy for 15 more minutes. So this will be open for two more weeks. Um, actually, I want to close public comment at this time, and uh, we will choose to open it up if we need to. So that concludes this item. Oh, I, I did want, I have one question, which is if our department could, our planning personnel could review the board that was brought up, and I was just curious to see if that's an accurate assessment of what would be allowed under the community plan. If that's okay, if we, if we look at that. Um, uh, so under... Do you want the review now, or do you want them to come back with some kind of a comment? Would you want to comment on this now, or we come back? Either way, the planning staff... Uh, Kevin Keller, City Planning. Uh, we were provided a copy, not that size. We do have a copy of that. We're happy to comment now, or we can also go ahead and sift through. Well, some just of the give us your comment. The council would like to know. Um, in terms of that, that I believe is a, it's a very powerful image. It's a reference to a development site in Hollywood, the uh, Capital Records development site. There is a proposal that has been submitted for a project of that size. Um, I believe that's a a downtown Aeon Tower photoshops. So I don't believe that actually represents the exact massing that's proposed. But I wanted to go on the record that that's not part of our community plan. However, the testimony is accurate. The Vine Corridor currently does not have height limits and there are none proposed. The plan is proposing additional height limits, as was referenced, from basically points west up to Cahuenga. I believe there's an ongoing concern about what's the appropriate height of future development along Vine. Any project of that scale, um, that particular project, um, does require a special discretionary review, so that has been applied for actually under the existing plan that's currently being reviewed by the department. Uh, it's it's going to have a full EIR, and then it'll have a future So, so bottom line is that image there <coughs> is not accurate because there would n could never be a building that size uh, next to no, Capitol Records there, building. No, no, no. Uh, is that what you're saying? Thank you. I'm going to have to respond. Uh, no, I believe the height, and again, I don't have the scale, but the proposal for that project is something similar of that height. I imagine if that's accurate. Okay. It's not an approved project, and it basically has been applied for under the current plan. I just for the sake of the audience, I want to be really clear that the proposed community plan is establishing new and more restrictive height limits in many areas of the community. The Vine Corridor today does not have height limits and is proposed to not have any height limits in the future. So projects of a certain scale do require discretionary review. That project would. I don't know the exact height, but I believe that's probably probably accurate. Yeah, probably accurate in terms of height. Not the massing or the design, but the height. There's a point of, clarif point of clarification, if I could. Yeah, thank you. Um, so in what you're saying is today, right now, without the change of the, of the, of the new plan that's being proposed, that could, in fact, uh, be built. Right. The With or without the plan. Cor correct. The floor area ranges in central Hollywood are between currently roughly around two to one and six to one. We're moving those ranges roughly to three to six. So we are not, the community plan that's being proposed is not raising the overall floor area height limit in Hollywood. However, both the current and the proposed plan basically allow up to a certain base. Anything above four and a half to one floor area is required to go to the city planning commission was required to go to the CRA board and it requires council approval. So we're folding those restrictions in place. So this proposal is winding its way as a project, but it actually has been applied for under the current plan. And like you said, the proposed plan would also allow that to be an application. And, and then lastly on that, with the new plan, um, in those areas that don't have those changes or restrictions being applied to them, would they be necessarily by right or would they still have to go through discretionary approvals as well? 
Yeah, there would still, uh, this is Kevin Keller, uh, the by right nature, any project triggering site plan review will have to go through a staff level approval and its own environmental project level impact analysis. However, projects of, of the scale that's being referenced, which is a six to one floor area project, would not be by right. It would have to go through a planning department recommendation, city planning commission approval, and council approval. Okay. And then you said the vine area does not have uh, currently or under the proposed plan any height restrictions. That's and, correct. And why is that the case? Why, why, under the new plan, you could put height restrictions, correct? Uh, certainly. I mean, I think the, the concept of this plan, and I think it was, it was brought up very articulately, was it's a decision on where to best direct growth if it occurs. And I know that's uh -huh. a very difficult decision to have, but it's very prudent and good policy to plan for a future. That's what this plan does. In terms of the central Hollywood area, today there are very limited height limits in place. The majority of height limits that are proposed, and we do have a map at the back of the room, are height limits that we are additional height limits around the uh, historic portions of Hollywood Boulevard. It's a national registered district. The blocks north and south did not have transitional height limits, so those are part of the plan. It would be in front of the council to consider additional height restrictions throughout Hollywood, but currently the height is really dictated by the floor area ratio, which allows a little more flexibility in types of design. And obviously, uh, I think the big debate, and I that's a project, we're not talking about that specific project today, but the concept of of height versus ground level amenities is a, is a big debate to have some flexibility there. Um, the plan does call for, in front of you, on one of the additional items that we turned in last time, is the development of a potentially a specific plan or a more detailed set of design standards and guidelines for Central Hollywood to help shape that overall massing. That would be an implementation program of the plan, uh, but certainly the area is an active change area. There could be revisions suggested. Okay. So okay. bottom line, this is an accurate Ma uh, map here or, or board, but it, our plan doesn't really address that issue because that's a separate application process that somebody else could apply for anywhere or is applying for, correct? Correct. And I, okay. I just, for the fairness of the speaker, there it, this, I, I think we said it pretty clearly, there is no height limit there today or proposed yeah. in that area, but it is a discretionary request. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. That closes this item. We'll be continuing for two weeks. Again, that closes this item. We are now open for public comment. We have Fran R. for public comment on items not on this agenda. Fran R. and George Abrams on items not on this agenda. Uh, George Abrahams, uh, SaveHollywood.org. I'm not going to speak on the Hollywood Community Plan. We need more local parks closer to the residents. The $950 million Hollywood Cap Park is one of the worst boondoggles in history. We already have the 100-acre Griffith Park only one and a half miles away. That money could create a lot of local parks closer to residents throughout all of Hollywood. Covering the Hollywood Freeway is dangerous and a health hazard. Commuters would be subject to a twice daily, five day a week gassing with exhaust fumes as they idle their way through Hollywood. No one would really want to engage in any physical activity directly above all these cars. Doctors recommend not exercising in an air polluted environment. The project would require continuous energy use for ventilation and lighting. A fire would most likely result in injuries and death, cripple a major traffic artery, and destroy the structure, just as a tanker fire recently destroyed an overpass on the Pomona Freeway. We need many more local parks. Please. Okay. Would you like to finish your sentence? Did you finish your sentence? Just finish your sentence. Okay. Uh, we, need, we need many more local real parks made out of real dirt, not one massive air polluted, energy wasting, health hazard, and death trap. Thank you, sir. Next. Hi, my name is Sub. Uh, Good afternoon. My name is Fran Reichenbach, SaveHollywood.org. And um, according to the Chief Accounting Officer's March budget projections, the city will have $220 million deficit next year. Does the city facing that kind of deficit want to spend money on fighting four more lawsuits to get a plan in place and correct it. The, def the defects in that Hollywood community plan are fatal. And when this they public comment. This is about, this budget, be this about budget and lit litigation. This is, uh, this is an intelligence test. Ma'am, this is an this agenda is an item. Test. Public comment is not on, not the, on the plan. This is the, an intelligence test. Do you want to do it the right way or do you want to do it the expensive Thank you, way? All right. That closes uh, public comment. And no other items, Rebecca? This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>